many of you know, if I continue to make decisions from survival, I can never actually make them from revelation. And what I would like to suggest to us today is that part of the, our journey is that we have to be so clear about the revelation that God has given us that we pull that revelation to this world. We aren't supposed to be living just for survival. We're supposed to be living from revelation. So the world may see fear, but where is your faith? The world may see what's happening around us, but that's not what we're supposed to be looking at. We're supposed to be bringing another world to this world. It's not what you look at that matters. It's what you see. Hello, Journey Church. We've traveled all across the country. We've been to a lot of churches. I grew up in the church. And what's happening here is real. And it's because Pastor Keith and his staff and his wife, Kara, behind the scenes are, are praying for fire. And so I'm here today to continue that journey and bringing the fire. Are we okay with that today? Yes. Okay. He wasn't joking. We're here to bring the fire. Okay. So number one, God does not want us to stay where we are. Jacob had a comfort zone. God had a dream. And how many of us know that, that God is probably going to give us a dream, not to make us feel good, but actually to make us be good. And so he's going to ask us to let go of the things that we find comfort in, probably to find him as our comforter. The second thing that we learned is that we are not defined by our pasts, our mistakes, even our current realities. We're defined by the promise of God on our life. We saw Jacob as a deceiver we saw him even as a manipulator. God saw Israel. Some of us today have walked in here seeing ourselves from our past and all of our mistakes and the things that we have done, things we've done wrong. But I want you to know that today God sees something that you don't see and that is what defines who you are. The third thing that we learned is that God is with us. He's with you. He's with me. That's a promise that he's given us. And it's interesting because even after Jacob wakes up from having this dream, he says, the Lord is in this place and I didn't even know it. For those of you today who are wondering if God is with you, I don't know that if it's God with you, I'm wondering, can you see him? Can you see him? And then the last thing that we looked at is that we don't actually live for the natural world. We don't live for it. We don't live from it. We actually live from a different reality. And that's where we're going to jump into today. Now, I have to be honest, this actually, this, that point exactly that we don't live for this natural realm was a journey that my husband and I decided to go on about four years ago. This was a new chapter in our lives. And this was a time that we actually were going through what we called our midlife awakening. <laughs> yeah. Some people call it a midlife crisis, but that just, that just is a total, that's a totally different word that we didn't want to use. So we were going through what we call our midlife awakening. Right, I was, again, at the time, only 30, right? But for us, we had started to climb the corporate ladder and the American dream. We were entrepreneurs. We were doing the things that people said that you should do to be fulfilled, right? We bought the house and the cars and the 2.5 kids and all of the things. But yet we found ourselves crawling into bed each night asking a very simple yet profound question, which is, is there something more? Anyone else ever asked that question before? Yeah. So for us, most of, you know, most people would just go on vacation. They'd buy a new car. They'd get a tattoo. No, we decided to sell everything and travel the country in an RV with three children under the age of five. Which, which by the way, most people told us that's the best time to travel the country. Said nobody with three kids under the age of five. Like there is a very strategic reason that people wait until they're retired and don't have kids that they travel the country in an RV. So for, for us anyways, my husband, who's right here, he, he is my adventurer. His soul came alive in this process. G good on him. <laughs> for me, I had a little bit of a different experience, right? I, at that point, didn't know I had control issues that I needed to overcome. I didn't know that I lived in a box and in a routine and that I had started actually finding comfort in things outside of the comforter. And so for me, this was kind of a spiritual journey. It was for him too, but it was, it was a time that even on this process, I was finding myself asking that same question like, God, 
Is there something more? And what I would like to propose is be careful the questions you ask God. And for some of us, this is going to be a little bit uh, rub us wrong because what's happened is that our, our past and our disappointment has now put God in a box. And because we're a people and we're human, we're trying to compartmentalize a world that we don't necessarily understand. So I have to give it metrics and I have to give it systems and standards so that I can make sense of it all. So what happens is that then we start to actually take our, our, all of our ideas around God and we're basing our theology on experiences, not truth. Right? And, and this was very real for me in this process as I started to realize that, that I was actually taking my pain and I was fitting God into the box of my pain. But I, what I've learned is that I can't afford to shrink God to fit within my pain. I actually have to take my pain to the feet of a God who loves me so much that he will let me break in order to heal. 